in the workhouse. Oh, hello, Scott. And they got no windows in the workhouse. You know, in the old days, they used to put your eyes out with a red-hot poker. Any of those bikini bombshells you're always watching worth a red-hot poker? Oh, dear. We become a race of peeping toms. What people ought to do is get outside their own house and look in for a change. Yes, sir. How's that for a bit of homespun philosophy? The Reader's Digest, April 1939. Well, I only quote from the best. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to take my temperature this morning. Quiet. See if you can break 100. You know, I should have been a gypsy fortune teller instead of an insurance company nurse. I got a nose for trouble. Can smell it 10 miles away. You heard of that market crash in 29? I predicted that. Oh, yes, how did you do that, Sean? Oh, simple. I was nursing a director of General Motors. Kidney ailment, they said. Nerves, I said. And I asked myself, what's General Motors got to be nervous about? Overproduction, I says. Collapse. When General Motors has to go to the bathroom ten times a day, the whole country's ready to let go. Oh, Stella, in economics, a kidney ailment has no relationship with the stock market, none whatsoever. Crash, didn't it? I yeah. can smell trouble right here in this apartment. First you smash your leg, then you get to looking out the window, see things you shouldn't see, trouble. I can see you in court now, surrounded by a bunch of lawyers in double-breasted suits. You're pleading, you say, judge it. It's only a little bit of innocent fun. I love my neighbors like a father. And the judge says, well, congratulations. You've just given birth to three years in Danamora. Yeah, right now, I'd welcome trouble, you know. You've got a hormone deficiency. How can you tell from a thermometer? Those bathing beauties you've been watching haven't raised your temperature one degree in a month. I think you're right. I think there is going to be trouble around here. I knew it. Oh, do you, do you ever heat that stuff? It gives your circulation something to fight. Oh, I see. What kind of trouble? Well, he's a free one. You kidding? She's a beautiful young girl, and you're a reasonably healthy young man. She expects me to marry her. That's normal. I don't want to. What's abnormal? Oh, I just, I'm not ready for marriage. Every man's ready for marriage when the right girl comes along. And Lisa Fremont is the right girl for any man with half a brain who can get one eye open. Oh, she's all right. Did you do have a fight? No. Father loading up the shotgun? What? Please, stop it. It's happened before, you know. Some of the world's happiest marriages have uh, started under the gun, as you might say. No, she's just not the girl for me. Yeah, she's only perfect. She's too perfect. She's too talented. She's too beautiful. She's too sophisticated. She's too everything but what I want. Is um, what you want something you can discuss? What? Well, it's very simple, Stella. She belongs to that rarefied atmosphere of Park Avenue, you know, expensive restaurants and the literary cocktail parties. People with sense belong wherever they're put. Well, can you imagine her tramping around the world with a camera bum who never has more than a week's salary in the bank if, if she was only ordinary? You never gonna get married? Well, I'll probably get married. When I do, it's gonna be to someone who thinks of life not just just as a new dress and a lobster dinner and the latest scandal. I need a woman who's willing to, hold it, who's willing to go anywhere and do anything and love it. So the honest thing for me to do is just call the whole thing off, let her find somebody else. Yeah, I can hear you now. Get out of my life, you perfectly wonderful woman. You're too good for me. Look, Mr. Jeffries, I'm not an educated woman, but I can tell you one thing. When a man and a woman see each other and like each other, they ought to come together, wham, like a couple of taxis on Broadway and not sit around analyzing each other like two specimens in a bottle. There's an intelligent way to approach marriage. Intelligence. Nothing has caused the human race so much trouble as intelligence. <laughs> Modern marriage. Now, we've progressed emotionally. Baloney. Once it was see somebody, Get excited, get married. 
Now it's read a lot of books, fence with a lot of four-syllable words, psychoanalyze each other until you can't tell the difference between a petting party and a civil service exam. People have different emotional levels. When I married Miles, we were both a couple of maladjusted misfits. We are still maladjusted misfits, and we have loved every minute of it. Well, that's fine, Stella. Now, would you fix me a sandwich, please? Yes, I will. And I'll spread a little common sense on the bread. Lise is loaded to her fingertips with love for you. I got two words of advice for you. Marry her. She pay you much? Oh. <laughs> Window shopper. 